It's a war crime waiting to happen. Israel wants to kick these Palestinians out of their homes and hand their land over to the military. Israel says that you are here illegally and you don't have the right to be here. What do you say to that? وهي الدولة العنصرية الفاشية اللي بتستهدفنا احنا بتستهدف ارضنا بتستهدف هويتنا على هاي الارض. Hundreds of homes are under imminent threat of demolition. احنا معرضين للخطر. احنا في هاي لحظة انهم يجي ينسفوا بيوتنا. وين نروح؟ While the residents await their fate, they're facing increased attacks from Israeli settlers and the military. هذا المستوطن هو محتل، هو سراق، هو يعني كمان هو مجرم ارهابي. معاي الفيديو، معاي كل شيء على الجندي كيف طخه وكيف سوى ولا ابني حامل سلاح ولا ولا متعرض، اجى هيك يعني فجأة انا بحط له اياها على السفر. الجيش راح يجيب المستوطنين، والمستوطنين راح تسكن محل الناس الاصليين. هاي اللي بصير في كل فلسطين، في كل فلسطين هاي اللي بتتبعه اسرائيل، سياسة التطهير العرقي، محو تاريخ الفلسطيني على هاي الارض وتهويلها. People behind us were just saying that we're peaceful activists, we're coming here peacefully, but yet the Israeli soldiers have continued to push them back. You can see one of the activists behind me is just holding a poster that says Save Masaf Yatta and Israeli Apartheid. But Israeli soldiers, as you can see, have continued to aggressively push the peaceful protesters back. This is what a typical Friday looks like in the South Hebron Hills of the occupied West Bank. Palestinians in the area have been ramping up their demonstrations in recent months, following a decision by the Israeli Supreme Court to expel them from their homes and turn the area into an Israeli military firing zone. So one of the activists who was here was just taken into custody. You can see him over there. He was waving his flag and chanting towards the soldiers. We heard right now behind us that one of the soldiers has told the activists, this is a closed military zone and you are not allowed to be here. إحنا بدنا نعيش أحبار بدون احتلال وحنيتها الكل بكون في إلى محلها الكل The South Hebron Hills, known locally as Masafir Yatta, is a vast mountainous area on the southern tip of the West Bank, bordering the Green Line, the demarcation line that separates Israel from the occupied Palestinian territory. It consists of a series of villages and hamlets and is home to an estimated 2,500 people. For two decades, the residents here have been tied up in a legal battle with the Israeli military, who declared the land as a firing zone and is seeking to rid it of all its Palestinian inhabitants. In May 2022, the Israeli Supreme Court ruled against the residents of Masaf Riyata, paving the way for the forcible displacement of more than 1,300 Palestinians and the demolition of eight villages. It's a move that rights groups say would amount to forcible transfer, a war crime under international law. If carried out, the plan to remove the residents of Masaf Riyata would constitute the largest mass expulsion of Palestinians in decades. Sami Hureni is from Masaf Riyata and is one of the founders of Youth of Sumud, a collective of young activists fighting against Israel's plans to expel them from their homes. اللي بصير انه الناس راح تفقد بيوتها، الناس راح تتشرد وهذا جريمه لا يمكن انها تحصل او يمكن السكوت عليها. What do you have to say about the fact that Israel's Supreme Court, supposed highest authority of justice, has ruled to forcibly expel more than a thousand Palestinians from their homes? ما هي محاكمة مجرد هي ظالمة وهي عنصرية فقط للجانب الإسرائيلي. أول حاجة 22 سنة من المحاكم من سنة 2000 لليوم والقرار نفسه نفسه يطلع، كمان هذا أكبر أكبر ظلم. الناس قدمت كل الإثباتات التاريخية يعني ملكية هي الأرض 
منظمة المسافة في رياضة المناطق ملكية خاصة هاي كل اللي قتل الاحتلال ضربها في عرض الحائط القاضي تبع هاي المحكمة هو مستوطن هو مستوطن بالتالي كل القرارات العنصرية هي موجودة ما فيش ما فيش شيء اسمه عدل ما فيش علاقة بأي موضوع إلى موضوع العدل Sami is from Atuani, one of 19 villages in Masafariyatta. The entirety of Masafariyatta falls under Area C of the West Bank. Everything in Area C, from building plans, roads, water and electricity, are all under Israeli control. Residents here are subjected to frequent night raids into their villages and homes, military detention, attacks from soldiers and settlers, and home demolitions. Israeli authorities rarely ever grant building permits to Palestinians in Area C, forcing many people to build without them, putting their homes at risk of demolition. Even in the few areas that are zoned for Palestinian construction, the Israeli military still enforces demolitions under the pretext of lacking Israeli-issued permits. استخدام هاي الحجج مشان انهم هم يظلوا محسسين بس بالخوف وبالخطر اذا مستوطن بده يسوي اي شيء وبحاجه لاي نوع من هاي التصاريح يعني لا لا يستقر اكثر من 24 ساعه Residents like Sami say these coercive policies and practices are done with the end goal of making life here impossible for the Palestinians حياة الفلسطيني في هاي المنطقة صعبة بكل معنى الكلمة من كل مضايقات وسياسات الاحتلال اليومية على الناس اللي بتهدف لطرد الناس من هاي المنطقة وتهجيرها وجود الناس هو أكبر مقاومة إحنا كيف نحافظ على هذا الوجود دورنا كنشطاء استمرية دعم صمود الناس وندعم بعضنا حتى نستمر في هاي في هاي المنطقة ونقاوم كل مخططات الاحتلال التهجيرية. The problems for the people of Masafariyatta began in the early 1980s, when Israel declared 3,000 hectares in the area as a closed military zone. They dubbed it Firing Zone 918. But there was one major problem. There were 12 inhabited Palestinian villages within the boundaries of the newly declared firing zone, and the residents had been living there for generations. So the Israeli military ordered the residents to leave, saying they were living illegally in a firing zone. The residents fought back by petitioning to the Israeli Supreme Court. The court issued an interim injunction that allowed the villagers to remain on the land, but it forbade any new construction, effectively throwing the residents into limbo, unable to grow their communities for more than 20 years. Israel offered to move the villagers to a different, far smaller area south of the town of Yatta, but the villagers refused, and the court proceedings dragged on. While the families waited for the court to decide their fate, the Israeli military continued to enforce home demolitions and conduct live training in the area, using everything from tanks, helicopters, bombs, rockets, and live fire. The Supreme Court decision in May gave the army the green light to completely demolish eight of the 12 villages in the firing zone and destroy hundreds of other structures within its borders. The plan will result in the forcible transfer of 1,300 Palestinians, including more than 500 children. بحاولوا بحاولوا انهم بحاولوا يكونوا مقنعين للعالم بيستخدموا موضوع انه هي اه منطقه اطلاق نار وتدريب جيش الاحتلال. الاحتلال بيجي على منطقة وين مسي الناس ساكنة بعدين هاي المنطقة منطقة طلاق نار لتدريب الجيش ما هذا حجة تدريب الجيش هاي مشان يهجر الناس لا أكثر ولا أقل مسافر يقطع هي منطقة منطقة سي وكمان بالإضافة إنها منطقة طلاق نار يعني الحياة صعبة مرتين So right now we're standing in what the Israeli military has designated as firing zone 918. Now the Israeli military says that the Palestinians who live here, who have been living here for decades, have no right to be here. The Israeli military actually has the power to come in and raise this entire village to the ground at any moment. 
every single one of the structures that you see around me has a demolition order on it. And if the military comes in and raises this village to the ground, the Palestinians who live here are going to be left homeless with nowhere to go. Majda Abu Sabha is one of the residents of the village. In the past year, the Israeli military has destroyed her home three times, with the latest demolition taking place just a few weeks ago. Just under 900 structures are under imminent threat of demolition in the firing zone. Those structures include homes, livestock pens, latrines, water cisterns, mosques, and schools. A few meters from the rubble of Majda's home is a local school that Israel has slated for demolition. This is one of four schools in Masafir Yatta that has an Israeli demolition order on it. The Israeli army can come in at any time and destroy this school. Now this particular school services around 70 to 80 children from primary school up until high school. The residents here say that if the school is destroyed, it's going to severely impact the education and literacy that they've been working so hard to improve for years. While the Palestinians in Masafir Yatta live under constant threat of expulsion, there are hundreds of Israeli settlers in the area who live very different lives. There are 10 Israeli settlements and outposts in Masafir Yatta, dotted along the border of the firing zone. Under international law, these Jewish-only settlements are illegal. Yet, over the years, the Israeli government has continued to promote settlement expansion in the West Bank at a rapid rate. The Israeli settlers in Masafir Yatta frequently attack Palestinians, their homes, and their livestock. Residents say the attacks happen on a daily basis and often take place under the supervision of Israeli military and police. Israeli settlers are rarely ever charged or investigated for attacks committed against Palestinians. <laughs> يعني كمان هو مجرم إرهاب بيرتكب كثير من يعني الاعتداءات والإجرام ضدنا شعب فلسطين فوجود هاي المستوطن هو كل بيمثل كل معاني القهر وكل معاني الظلم كل معاني الاستبداد إلنا في هاي المنطقة. The residents of Masafir Yatta fear that if Israel kicks them off their land, it will eventually be turned over to the settlers. Newly revealed classified documents confirmed what the residents believed to be true for so many years. In a top-secret 1979 meeting, former Israeli Prime Minister, then Agricultural Minister Ariel Sharon, explained that he created firing zones across the West Bank for the sole purpose of eventually handing the land over to Israeli settlers. In 
the village of Khirbet al rakiz we met a Palestinian family whose lives were turned upside down during an Israeli raid on their village last year. In January 2021, Israeli forces raided the home of Rasmi Abu Arram's neighbor and attempted to confiscate the generator that powered both families' homes. As Israeli soldiers beat him and his neighbor, Rasmi's 24-year-old son, Harun, ran down from their home to his father's aid. The screams in the video were from Harun's mother, who pleaded for the soldiers to call an ambulance. By the time the family were able to reach a hospital, it had been a few hours and Harun was in critical condition. He remembers the moment he woke up in the hospital as if it was yesterday. Doctors told Harun's parents that the bullets caused a severe spinal cord injury, paralyzing him from the neck down. He would never move on his own again. أنا يعني انصدمت ما قدرش استوعب الموقف الكلام اللي حكوا لي دمروا دمرونا يا امي دمروا حياتنا هيو قاعد بيتالم ديل ونهار Since Harun was shot the Israeli military has taken no responsibility for the incident An army investigation after the shooting concluded that Israeli forces acted in quote self defense and that they faced a quote clear and present risk to their lives. The family were told by lawyers that there was little hope that a lawsuit would yield any results. Mm-hmm. Harun is now 25 years old and spends his days lying on the floor of his family's cave. He relies on his parents and sisters to feed him, bathe him, and give him his medicine. Because their home falls in the firing zone, Harun and his family still live every day under the threat of expulsion. With every passing day, the residents of Masafir Yatta say their situation becomes even more dire. Experts warn that if the state is successful, it would set a dangerous precedent for other Palestinian communities under threat of expulsion, and would pave the way for Israel to quietly annex the land into its territory in the future. As we traveled through Masafir Yatta, there was one common theme amongst the Palestinians living there, the concept of sumut, or steadfastness, and perseverance on their land. They told us that no matter what happens to them, they have no plans of leaving. We 
انا اتغدى على الدوش دافع عن ارضي وعرضي وعن ابوي وجاري ولذلك رجعنا دي ورجع دي بدافع عن ارضي ومش عاد خلي عنا كل الاعمال العنف اللي بعملت عملها سرايين عشان التهجير لكن لا بنار حر لا بنار حر لا بنار حر صامدين 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 والمسافر إنا ما هي لهم احنا يا الشعب الفلسطيني ما بنضع وعنا ارادة قوية يعني قديش الاحتلال بيعمل فينا مصايب واجرائم واحنا بنضلنا صامدين